Okay, so there are a few things that I want, a little adjustments I want to make to the mesh. Uh, first is that this edge loop here needs to be scaled in a little bit. So I'm going to go into edge mode, double click on that, and then scale it in like that so it has the taper that the handle has in real life. And then I need to go into vertex mode. Uh, these vertices here actually need to be more lined up with the outer edge. And these can be scaled up like that so that that curve is more like that. Then I want to make geometry to basically match up with this rounded rectangle where the handle goes into the head. So I am going to make a few adjustments. So I'm going to select these three vertices and I want to move them up, but I want to keep them on the same surface area. So I'm going to come into my modeling toolkit and set my transform constraint to surface slide. And this will allow me to move those vertices, but have them slide along the mesh. So I can Keep an eye on those until they're basically lined up with the front part of that rectangle. And then I'll do the same thing for these three vertices. Right. And then with these vertices, I will scale them out so that they meet up with the edges of the uh, indented rounded rectangle. I'm actually going to turn off that constraint now. So I now have a basic rectangle that fits the area where that rounded rectangle is. Then I'm going to select these four faces. And I'm going to go to extrude. And this time I'm going to offset those a little bit. And then I'm going to go into multi-cut and I'm going to add an edge loop here and an edge loop here. And I'm again going to go into the surface slide and oops, slide these forward and add an edge loop right about there. Actually with this one I can just use these edges I have. So surface slide And then with these vertices, I'm going to slide them in, scale them in to uh, make that basic rounded rectangle that happens up at the top. So oops, talking about this rounded rectangle here. Then Go into face mode, select these faces, make sure I don't have any extra selected anywhere, 
and this time I want to extrude and I'm going to extrude down just a tiny bit I think it's actually negative 0.05 and I'm going to offset 0.05 so I've got that little bit of an indent now that happens on the top then the next thing I want to do is start adding in bevels where edges are actually hard on the surface. So if you look at something like this, you can see that these little edges here are um, have little bevels on them so they appear hard. Same with along here, same with right along here, and all of the outer edges. So, I'm going to go into edge mode, double click on that edge so that it's the whole edge loop is selected, choose bevel, make the fraction a little smaller, and I'm going to add a segment. Now you want to be careful not to make the fractions too small um, or it will make the edges look too hard. Then we've got every other edge line that matches up with these edges that need to have bevels on them. And I actually want these parts in here too. And then I will hit bevel and this one I'll just leave with a single bevel like that. Now, I'm getting some weird little triangles here, so I'm going to go target well to go into vertex mode and then just didn't mean to I must have accidentally selected that edge when I didn't want to. So, undo that, go back to uh bevel. So, and with here, I'm going to change my target weld to center and I'm going to merge those together and then back to target and then merge like that. All right, so some more beveling that needs to be done. Basically all of these outer edges That 
looks about right. So I will up those two. Alright, so I'll do bevel again. And this time I'm going to want to increase that fraction a bit. And get something that looks like that. Okay, so there's a few places that I'm going to have to clean stuff up, like right along here. So again, I'm going to go into target weld, and with this, I am going to uh, go to center, and I'm going to merge those two, and then target weld that one to that. And anywhere else there is that kind of thing, I'm going to... Do that. And then I can select this edge and do a bevel on that. And that I want the bevel to be a little bit bigger and I want to add a segment to it. So it's something like that. And just notice right here and here that curve isn't as smooth as I would want it to be, so I'm going to kind of bring that in a little bit. So that's something like that. Alright, so now I can go Mesh Display, Soften Edge, and it still should look like it has overall hard edges. Up, looks like... So I noticed that there's a weird shading thing over here, and it looks like I somehow forgot to select this edge when I beveled. So I can just come in and use my multi-cut to add in those edges, and then delete these edges. And when I delete these, I have to do control delete to delete the vertex and the edge. So before I continue further, I want to check and see to make sure that I don't have any uh, weird geometry. So I'm going to go into object mode and go to mesh cleanup. And I'm going to say select matching polygons. And I'm going to look for faces with more than four sides and non-manifold geometry and click cleanup. And so these little dots are showing that I have some non-manifold geometry. Um, so what I want to do is select this and go back to the cleanup. And this time choose cleanup matching polygons and click apply. And that should have cleaned up the non-manifold geometry. So I can 
now check select and do apply and so nothing was selected so it means that it did clean that up. So to see what this is eventually going to look like we are going to select this and then go to Mesh and Edit Mesh, yeah, Mesh Smooth. And you can now see that the smoothing has smoothed out these curves, smoothed out the transitions from places, and created it so that we have nice curves along the whole thing. So that is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna, just going to undo that because for UV purposes we're going to do the work on the unsmooth mesh. So at this point I'm going to select this and go to um, freeze transformations which is this little icon here and then I'm going to go to delete by type history and I'm going to do a file save as and I'll save that as scene version 5. In the next video, we will start talking about UV mapping.